All right then, gang. So in this lesson, I'd like to talk a little bit about control flow. And by that, I mean things like for loops, if statements, that kind of jazz. So we're going to start off with a simple for loop, which is much like a for loop in most of the programming languages. It allows us to execute a code block right here a certain amount of times based on a condition inside these parentheses. Now, inside these parentheses, there's three different parts. First of all, we need some kind of variable, which is going to be an integer to track how many times we're going to run this code block. I'm going to call this i, and we initialize it to be zero to begin with, then a semicolon. Next is the condition. Now, if the condition is true, it's going to run the code block. If it's false, it's not going to run it. So we're going to say run the code block for as long as i is less than five. And the third part after the next semicolon is going to be something that we want to do with i after every iteration, after every loop. And we're going to say take i and add one to it, which is just the addition sign twice. So that adds one to the current value of i. So inside here, I'm going to print something out and I'll just print out a string to say the current value of i is, and then we'll output i, so dollar sign i. So then when it first runs this code block, it's going to initialize this variable i to be zero. It's going to check this and say, is i less than five? Well, yes, it is. So then it runs this code block and we're going to see the current value of i is hopefully zero to begin with because that's what we initialize it to be. Then at the end of the code block, it looks at this piece of code right here and runs that and it says, okay, we'll add one to i now. So now i is one. Then it checks this again right here. Is it less than five? Well, yeah, it's still less than five. So it runs the code block again. This time we should see the current value of i is one. Then it gets to the end of the code block, adds one to i, becomes two and so forth, all the way up until i becomes five, at which point it's no longer less than five and therefore it's not going to run this code block anymore. So that's it. It only runs it from zero to four. So let's run this, see if it works and we can see, yep, all the way up to four. So that works. So that's a simple for loop. All right. All right. So now let me get rid of that. What I'd like to show you now is how we can loop through something like this, an array. So I could say four and then we'd say score in scores like so. So what I'm doing here is saying, OK, I want you to run through. Oh, and in fact, this needs to be an int. So we say for int score in scores because these are all integers. And it's saying I want you to iterate through this list and I want you to refer to each one of these values each time we iterate over this as the score. So it's going to start out at 50, run the code block, and we can access this score to be 50 inside this code block. Then 75, then 20, then 99, and then 100, and so forth. So I could say print, and then we'll say the score is, and then we'll output score. So we should see the score is 50, then the score is 75, 20, 99, and so forth. So let's try running this code, see if this works. And yet we can see it iterates over this list right here and it gets access to each one of these values inside the list and we print each one out. Awesome. All right, so now what I'd like to do is look at if statements. So I could say if, and then inside the parentheses, we can place a condition. If that condition is true, it's gonna run this code. If it's not, it's not gonna run that code. So I'm gonna place this print statement inside here and then I will say if the score is greater than 50, then output it. If it's not greater than 50, it's not gonna do that. It's gonna just skip this code entirely. So let me run this and hopefully it's gonna work. I think it's stalling, oh, there we go. So we see the score is 75, which is this, 99 and 100. So all of those are over 50. The rest of them, including this, that's not over 50, it's equal to 50, under 50, and under 50. So it doesn't print those out, only the scores over 50. Awesome. Now, if we wanted to, we could also add an else clause to this if statement. So we're saying, okay, well, if the score is greater than 50, print this. Otherwise, just run this code block right here. So we could say print, and we'll just say score not high enough. And for every value now, which doesn't conform to this, which isn't greater than 50, we're just going to print this instead. The score is not high enough. So if we run this, we should see all of those still printed out. But then we can see score not high enough for the first one, for the third one right here, and for the last one, which is 30 as well. Cool. So that's if statements.
So there's one more thing I'd like to show you, and that's how we can kind of filter these scores based on a certain condition, and then only run this logic inside the for loop for that filtered list of scores, essentially. So let me get rid of this, and we'll still use a print to print out the score. We'll say the score is, and then we'll output the score. Now, currently, if we run this, it's obviously going to run it for every score because there's now no logic to say only do it if it matches a certain condition. So we should see all of these values, right, which we do. Now, what we can do is use a where method on this list. So where. And the where method is a little bit like the filter method in JavaScript. It allows us to filter certain elements out of the list. So we're saying, OK, well, we want to loop through the scores, but only where a certain condition is met inside those scores. So for this, we fire a function and we can use arrow syntax right here to just return a condition over here. Now, we get an argument S, which refers to the score itself on each one of these iterations because we're iterating through this to determine whether it should be left inside the scores that we loop through. Does that make sense? So I'm going to say where the score right here, so S is the score, is greater than 50. So then, I'm saying grab me the scores where the score is greater than 50. So we're kind of filtering out the ones that are not greater than 50. And now we're just looping through the rest of them. So let's see if this works. I'm going to run this. And now we can see we only get those three. So it's filtered out the other ones. And we could put other conditions in here as well. So we could say, Get me the scores where the score is equal to 100, like so. And if we run this, then we should see, oops, sorry, it's just two equal signs over here. We should see that the score that equals 100 is output to the console and nothing else. All right, let's try one more. We'll say where the score is less than 50. Get rid of the 100 over here, like so. Run this again. And now we can see these two right here. Awesome. So hopefully now, my friends, you understand how we can use for loops, for in loops, and also if statements, as well as this where method that we can use on lists to kind of filter them.